Okay, first of all, when you look at today's class, okay, I have an announcement in here that is saying, uh, that's giving you what you need to get done for, um, basically for the end of the class, okay? Get your projects turned in, okay? Um, check the discussion boards. Do make sure you post your discussion board for today and start to work on your final discussion board post. Um, I really hope you guys have gotten something out of this class, okay? I put a, sort of put quite a lot of effort into making sure that we had material for you, making sure that I did everything we would have done that we would have done on campus. So we've actually done everything. Yes, I did alter a few assignments rather than draw the classroom or the shops. I had you draw your houses and everything else like that. But my goal was that we did do everything that we were supposed to do. The quality of the projects that I'm seeing come in are telling me that. You guys are doing an excellent job on what I've seen so far. Um, there, part six of your final project is available, and there's a single discussion board post. And yes, I do have a word count on this one. Okay, I'm required to. It's part of your final exam grade. Um, I've put some videos out there on basic electrical. Okay, they're very important, guys. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of class time when you come back on Wednesday of going over basic electrical. Okay, I'd rather spend the class time starting to go into what we need to know for the um, air conditioning term. But um, please watch the videos. And again, I'm here in email. And if you have anything specific we need to touch on, on the basic, like this is how you wire a light bulb type of stuff, um, please let me know. Okay, send me an email or something like that. If you have questions on schematics, we're going to be working on schematics again starting next week. So please let me know if you have questions. Okay, um, very important. So again, contact me with any questions. There's no conference on Monday. Okay, there's absolutely no conference on Monday. If you connect to this call on Monday, you're probably going to hear me talking with New England New Starts. Um, you're more than welcome to join, but it's stuff that you've already heard probably two or three times, and I don't think you need to hear it again. Your class starts on Wednesday, okay? So between now and Monday, if you see any announcements for advanced refrigeration or for the, or I'm sorry, core, core air conditioning or for um, the night class is going to be going into gas. If you see any announcements between now and then regarding classes on Monday or Tuesday, ignore them. They're for the New England students. So, and again, if you have questions, email me or ask me at the end of today's material. Um, so that's really important. If you have not already done so, sign in to your next class, okay? We've given you enrollment links. I've tried to make sure all the rosters are in there. Okay, day class, you're going into core air conditioning. Should be showing up on your dashboard or you should have gotten an invite. If you have not gotten either of those, email me. Again, this is important. If you haven't got an invite for the class, email me. Okay, um, rosters are not quite set up in the system yet, and we may have missed somebody. It's happened before, and it's not intentional. So again, um, in the class, um, announcements will probably start to show up over the weekend, but again, do not worry about it until Wednesday when you guys come back from break. Any quick questions on what's what we need to do today in terms of, or by Monday in terms of assignments or anything having to do with next term. Anyone want to ask me any questions regarding that? I have a quick, I have a quick question regarding the assignment and the discussions that we've been having. Yeah. <clears throat> yesterday when you went through, uh, yesterday when we went through, um, uh, that scenario on your drawing where just the master bedroom was calling for cooling and you had that, uh, and uh, forgive me, I don't remember exactly what it was called, but that, that bypass system so that airflow kept going over the cooler, uh, the uh, coil. Um, you, you just had it there. Uh, yeah, the static bypass. Um, if, 
if you had, and I don't know if you remember seeing my drawing, but I've got that wide open area, and then what I was thinking of doing was zoning the bathroom and bedroom as one as one zone for downstairs, and then the wide open area as one, because my father may move in with us, and if so, he'd be using the downstairs. We'd renovate the bathroom to a full bath, and that bedroom and bathroom would be his master bath bedroom. So... When I, I have, you know, it's much smaller in comparison, um, you get that other room, but I think area-wise it's similar to your drawing. So the bypass and the sensor, uh, the thermostat sensor on, on the outside uh, unit were the things that I would really need to make sure that works properly, correct? Um, yeah, that's the important stuff. Okay. Okay, it sounds like there's other things that I am going to need to include. Well, you, uh, need, you need to think about CFMs, okay? I want you to be very careful with CM, CFMs. And your right. freeze that goes on the inside coil. Okay, on the inside. Okay, that's right, okay. to keep it from it freezing. Shuts, it, 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 it shuts the outside coil off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Makes sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I in order to do that room and the bathroom, I'm not going to need any more than I think it came out to something like 190 CFM. Um, so okay, if it's 190 CFM, that you have a one ton. You you we've decided on one or one and a half. One and a half. Okay, so that is quite honestly pushing it. What do you mean? In terms of in terms of just having one zone running on that, I'd be a little concerned. Well, no, I was going to have two zones. No, but I, I was mean, one have... zone at one time. Let's say that master suite is the the new master suite is calling by itself on a one and a half. Um, if you only have a hundred ninety cfm, I'm a little concerned about that. Okay, too may, small or too big? Too, too small. small. Too small. Okay, so I may ha I may have no choice but to keep it use use man use manual dampers and keep it on one zone. Yeah, yeah, I okay. I hate to, I hate to say that, but place your returns properly and um just hopefully balance it out properly is just my opinion. 190 CFM is going to be too small, especially in your construction. Okay, but wasn't your, I mean, yours is a three-ton, and if that master bedroom there is one, is, is one unit, that's got. Yeah, remember, no, no, no. Didn't you set up, go up a little higher, didn't you set it up so that that one room and bathroom was its own zone, and then the two back walk, bedrooms were their own zones? Walk-in closet. Think. Again, I didn't do a I didn't do a heat load on this. Okay, so I just it, right. it may be fine. I just threw numbers in here. Just be aware of that. Oh, okay. okay, okay. I did not do a heat load on this house. Okay, okay, okay. To be fair, so just yep. look at the CFMs. You really don't want to deliver less than twenty five percent of your air handler CFM to a zone. Okay, well, the air handler is only 600 CFM, 620. Yeah, you might be okay. It's just borderline. Okay. Okay. And if you use a, if you happen to put in a two-stage condenser, okay, one of the higher-end condensers, you might be okay yeah. because the compressor could run on low, low speed, okay, okay. and you'd be fine. Okay. So if you, you do, yeah, if you did your scenario, if you went with a two-stage cond condensing unit, I think you'd be fine. Okay, good. I'll write that down. Okay, so any other questions on anything um, that we went over yesterday or anything about next term? Because I do have one more thing I want to go over today because there's something, there's something additional in design I just wanted to touch on. So if, any, if nobody else has any questions, let's shift our focus a little bit from, um, from a true forced air system 
And let's shift our focus a little bit to hot water and cold water and hydronics. Okay, I'm not going to delve in too deep because, again, there's a hydronics term that you guys will be getting more information, but it would be wrong of me not to mention hydronics a little bit as we're going through this. So I have another house here. Okay, I didn't do a heat load on this house. I, for demonstration purposes, I could really care less. The homeowner is dead set that they want what we call radiant floors. In other words, in this area over here, they want to have warm feet when they get up in the morning. In this area over here, they want to have heated floors. Okay, in the kitchen, they want to have heated floors because they want to be able to be out there in the early mornings and feel warm. They also want to have air conditioning. Okay, so someplace outside, they want to have, let me find a good spot for this. Yeah, we'll put it here. They want to have their trusty little condenser outside because they want to have air conditioning. What are you going to do? Let's talk this through, folks. This is not just a one-way conversation. Let's. What are they going to do? Well, what type of uh, uh, radiant floor? Are you talking glycol, uh, heated liquid, or are you talking electric? They don't want electric. Okay, so it's going to be glycol, um, and that's going to run off of its own unit. I mean, that's going to run off the furnace. A furnace or a boiler. Okay. But, they put a but it's not going to have anything to do with the condenser. Well, does it? I heard someone say something in the background. What are? What did you say? Well, I was thinking you'd have to put a boiler in the basement to supply the radiant floor heating. And then with the amount of heating you already have in the space, you may be able to get away with doing something like mini splits or a heat pump for heating and cooling. What if I gave you the term hydro air? Have you heard that term before? Anybody here hydro air? Yeah, you, you, it's kind, it's kind of like a, a, a an above ground version of a geothermal thing, isn't it? No. Um, okay, let let's walk through this. Okay, so this is the scenario. People want things that are only doable with hot water but they want to have their air conditioning as well. So we basically have two options. We can either run an air handler like we did in our last diagram for the cooling, and then also we could come around the outside of the house and run the traditional baseboard, okay, that basically would, just for lack of better, um, Okay, I could come around here, around the house, I could run all my baseboard heating, and I could go all the way around my outside walls with the appropriate baseboard. Then I could run a separate zone with mixing valves and everything like that for my radiant floor heating. Radiant floor heating is just tubes under the, under the floor. Okay, so I could do, do my heating with hydronics, I could do my cooling with forced air like we've been doing. Or... I could realize that I can do way more in terms of air quality with forced air, okay, and filtering the air, bringing in outside air, and I can combine those hydronics into the forced air. So it all starts off with, once again, we have our condenser outside, and we put an air handler, and again, this could go in the basement, okay, um, what does this say? And uh, this doesn't tell me if it has a basement or not. Oh, it says concrete, concrete slab. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna. We're gonna. Um, okay. So this is a situation okay. where you have to. I'm gonna change that. Okay. I'm gonna. We're we're gonna pretend we just dug a basement. Okay, everybody. <laughs> we're gonna pretend we just dug a basement. Okay. I've excavated. Okay. So we know we're going to have to have a boiler, okay? And I try to normally place boilers on one side of the basement, okay, because I want an outside wall. 
Okay, and the reason I want an outside wall is I don't anymore install low efficiency boilers. Okay, I install high efficiency, usually wall mounted. Okay, um, because people like saving money. So we have an exhaust pipe that's going to come out of the. Um, are you, uh, Chris? Are you referring to on demands? No, not on demands. Okay, just it's called zero mass. On demand is more for hot, just hot water heaters. Okay, no, I call them zero mass, okay, where they don't have, and you know what, I'm not going to disagree, it could be on demand as well, but they're considered zero mass. They, they do don't have, call them like high efficiency combination boilers, don't they? Because they typically run domestic water as well, or can? Well, not in the ideal scenario. In the ideal scenario, you use what's called an indirect water tank that sits next to a on dem or a on zero mass boiler. Yeah, I've seen that. Okay, where you have it's like I love the Wall McLean, so that's what I'm going to show you as we go through this today. Okay, so we have a indirect water tank. Why do I like an indirect water tank better than an on de the better than a traditional on demand water heater? Anybody know? It's not constantly boiling and or uh, heating a tank that's just sitting there waiting to be asked to do something. Well, what type of in, if you have a master suite like this over here, is it very likely that this tub is going to be a relatively large tub over here? You have a master suite. Is it very yeah, likely it could that this is going to be oversized? Could be. Okay, what's the chance that in a house like this you're going to have somebody in the tub or taking shower and you're going to have another person over here taking shower, you're going to have people in the kitchen and the mornings especially, all at the same time? So you have an extra reservoir of water in case of extra demand? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The little on demands are great, but the minute you have a very high use of water, Okay, it just can't keep up. And you might have what, to actually install two. What, what's your answer then to people? Like in my area, I talk to plumbers uh, about my house out in Carlisle, and every, every one of them without exception has said stay away from the on-demands uh, because our water is so hard. They said you'll be throwing it in the garbage way fast. Yeah, I agree with that. That's why I like the indirect tanks. That's another reason. Okay, what I'm talking about indirect tank, let me pull it up, and this might all of a sudden make sense. It's like a superstore. It looks like a water heater, but it connects into your boiler. So there's actually a loop. There's a boiler loop that goes down through the center of this. Okay, that the water from the boiler goes through a loop, just like you would have a loop of baseboard or a loop of coil and you heat the water, the domestic water that's surrounding that loop with the boiler. Okay, they're extremely efficient. And especially if you connect it with a high efficiency, let me find one, wall mounted boiler like this. Okay, you can use the Wall McLean Ultras. Okay, they hang on the wall and they're an extremely high efficiency boiler, you put the tank together with a high efficiency boiler, okay, and you can get some really great efficiency on that, plus you can do all your heating off of it. I mean, 120, between 155, 123,000 BTUs, that's a pretty decent sized house. Okay, so back to our drawing. If I have a boiler that's a high efficiency boiler, or if you have to, you could use like a traditional um, oil boiler. You have an indirect water heater. You have your condenser. Now, all we're missing here is what are we doing with the air handler? Okay, so again, I'm going to pick a more, I'm going to pick some place, eh, we won't put it there. I'm going to pick some place with the air handler. I'm probably going to put it over here in the basement, okay, where I can run duct work from that air handler, okay? Same thing we looked at yesterday. I'm not going to redo the world, okay? And we have duct work 
So we've tied in our water heater, we have our air handler, and then over here, okay, I have my, I could throw my radiant heating in on the floor over here, tied in as a zone. I could throw my radiant heating here, and I could throw my radiant heating here. Okay, so the floors are nice and warm, but we also can use our air handler for our ductwork. Now, the air handlers I'm talking about are specialized hair handlers. Okay, again, I pick on first company because I really like the company. This is normally what I recommend. Okay, it's a first company air handler. Looks like any other air handler. Okay, it has two coils in it. Okay, it has two coils. One is our traditional A coil that's right there. That's our air conditioning. So the air comes in from the bottom. It's an upflow. Air comes in from the bottom. When we're air conditioning, air comes in and comes through that, okay, and is cool at that point. That's our air conditioning. And then blows out the duct work up here. Now it passes through another coil, okay, that's up there at the top. So air conditioning, we're using this coil at the bottom for our air conditioning. This is connected to our condenser outside, traditional air conditioning. Winter months, okay, this changes around. Okay, we no longer have hot air coming in. We have cold air coming in. And then it passes through a hydronic coil, which is connected to your boiler up top. Okay, and so, we blow. So you're just you're you're just using the 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 hot water the hot water at the top in place of the electric uh, strips in the normal like heat pump type thing. Yeah, I'm using I'm or using furnace, my boiler say. water, which is running very close to 190 degrees. Okay, and we're heating the air coming through there. Now, again, think about cost here. Think about why this is an advantageous setup. Okay, is I'm, reuse, I'm using ductwork for both heating and cooling. Okay, I can still zone it just like I can do with the air conditioning we talked about yesterday. But I also have the ability to, over here, I can zone off my, I can put a thermostat in various places here for my hydronic baseboard. Okay, so let's say I wanted to put a thermostat, um, could put a thermostat by someplace in here. I could put a thermostat someplace in here that's specifically designed to control those the the in floor loops. Okay, and I could keep my floors at a pleasant most people like the floors around 98 degrees, okay, just around body temperature. So it doesn't feel cold, but you can't put 180 degree water through the floors. Okay, that's just a bad idea. <coughs> um, that would be a real eye opener in the mornings. So then I also have the ability to do my hot water here, okay, and my air handler. Air handler can run on another thermostat someplace out in a central location. That's a heat or cool thermostat. Everybody see the the positives of this site of this type of setup here. The boiler, the indirect tank, and the hydron the hydro air unit is actually a very very great combination to have. Um. It's probably one of the highest quality installs. You can do heat and cool all at the same time. And then some homeowners get crazy and they want a heated towel bars, believe it or not, where they can hang their bad, their towels on when they get out of the shower so they're dry right away and warm the next morning. I can't do that with forced air alone. I really can't do that with electric heat because it costs too much, but I can definitely do that with an air handler. Now, this here... This unit here could also be a heat pump. 
Okay, so I may be able to eliminate some of the use of the boiler for my heating by using a heat pump instead of a standard air conditioner. So the heat pump runs in what I call the shoulder seasons, okay, where it's still over 32 degrees outside, but you need heat. Okay, the heat pump runs in those seasons and is very efficient. Um, especially when we start talking in air conditioning about heat pumps, you're going to find out that heat pumps are probably the most efficient form of heating that you can have. The only problem with heat pumps is that when it switches over, in other words, if it gets too cold outside for the heat pump to work, in a traditional heat pump, it switches over to electric heat. By using the hydro air unit, we don't switch it over to electric heat. I switch it over to the water loops, okay, and we switch it over to hydronic, which is far more efficient than electric heat, okay? Electric heat just sucks down the power. Questions on this? Thoughts? These, these systems, I mean, most, most of these systems here are going to be like propane or natural gas, correct? Or oil. I can stick an oil I can stick an oil furnace or an oil boiler on this. Okay. Yeah, um, I, ju I just meant I just meant it's got a combustion chamber as as a It source. has something. Yeah, hydro air units. Now I've seen hydro airs installed in apartments and condos using a hot water heater. Okay? I've seen a hot water heater that's a propane fired hot water heater or natural gas and they actually circulate through the first company HydroAir, just water from the water heater. And I've seen that used as well. But again, HydroAir units, I would, um, I would definitely be looking as high of an efficiency as you could possibly get. By the way, if you guys don't know about this site, um, supplyhouse.com is a relatively neat site. Um, it's a lot of times where I order stuff from. For some reason, sometimes they give me better prices than the um, local supply houses. So, okay, so um, supplyhouse.com. And again, I get no payback for mentioning these names. This is more for your own help. Um, any, any other questions on this that what we just went over? Any thoughts about where this would be useful? Any questions on this? So again, give some when you're dealing with customers, give some thought and have really have good conversations about them, what they want, what will make them the most comfortable, okay? So we've talked about good, better, best options. Okay, in this case, um this would be my best. Okay? This would be the ideal situation for um northern climates. Okay, hydro air. Would I use it in my area? No. Not a chance. Okay, because we don't do enough heating. It doesn't pay. In my area, heat pumps are, the heat pump is probably what you want. And in fact, I use a heat pump on my water heater. Uh, because again, I don't want to just run power. I don't want to run electric strips and anything. Okay, so we have this here now. The other question that has come up a lot of times, and I'm surprised nobody asked it to me yet, is can I just skip the air handler, okay, and can I run a chiller, okay, for, can I just use my existing baseboard heat, where I have baseboard heat around the side of the house, can I just run chilled water through there, can I run what we call a chiller, out here that chills water, okay? And can I run that through my existing baseboard? Anybody see a positive or negative with that? Could I run chilled water through the baseboards and cool the space? <clears throat> well, you may be able to run it, but I don't know that how well it would cool the space because you're, you're, you're not pushing air and the cold space is down near the floor. That's one of the problems. Yeah, I'm not pushing air across those. Okay, I'd have to have them near the ceiling. What's the other problem? No dehumidification. Um, you're on the right track, 
if I put a, you're definitely on the right track with that, Don. If I put a, if I put a, um, if I put a cold glass on a hot, in a hot, humid room. Oh, they, you would get condensation on all of them. Yeah. So and that could no, promote no, rot in the wood of floor. The no dehumidification is a very valid issue because what's going to happen with that condensate? It's going to drip down onto the floor or the wall wherever the pipes are coming through, and it could cause rotten mold. Okay, the, so again, no dehumidification is definitely the right track, but the problem, the biggest problem is that the water is going, to, is going to condense on these cold baseboards, and we don't have any drainage. So it's going to drain right onto the floor. It's going to be absorbed back into the air. So, yeah, we have no dehumidification, but we have property damage at the same time. Now, commercial buildings, they do have a chiller outside, and some residential buildings do too, okay, but they don't use these baseboards. Okay, the baseboard idea isn't happening. They use air handlers in different places in the building or what we call PTAC units, like the hotel units you see. Okay, so we basically cycle the chiller during the summer months and then we do a changeover to the boilers for the winter months. So we will use one set of pipes, but there's a changeover. Did you know it's illegal, it's against building code now to have to run hot and cold systems at the same time? It's against energy codes. So we have to do a changeover if we have a chiller in a commercial environment. That's why a lot of hotels during the falls and the springs aren't the most comfortable in the world. Okay, because we have to do a changeover. So hot water and cold water chiller combination systems are very applicable. We use them in large construction, but we cannot use baseboard. Okay, we can only use air handlers, like the hydro air approach is tucked away over the ceilings. Any questions on that? Okay, chillers are awesome. Mitsubishi makes some really, um, Mitsubishi, believe it or not, I think has a residential chiller that is available. Um, there's a, Dakin has a residential chiller that's available. They're awesome. H hydronic heating and cooling is probably by far one of the most efficient ways to move heat. Okay, water has a lot of mass. It stays warmer much longer than air does, okay? And I can change the water temperatures based on outdoor conditions. So hydronics is probably one of the most efficient ways to move heat around either in or out of a building. However, it's expensive, okay? It takes a lot to run the piping, okay? It's less expensive now that we go to PEX, but there's still high quality installs still use copper and steel. Um, it's a known, it doesn't break down over years. We still don't know exactly how PEX reacts over 50 years. Um, good hydronic systems rarely need service. Okay, might have to change a zone valve out occasionally, but again, we're going to talk more about this when you guys do your hydronic term. Okay, when, you say they're expen when you say they're expensive, you're saying the, the install is expensive. The operation of it is efficient. Right. Oh, yeah. Install is where you spend your money on hydronic systems. Okay, you get a good hydronic, you get a good boiler installed, you take care of it, it's installed properly, if the water's looping through it properly, okay, and if everything is set up according to specs, in other words, no one takes shortcuts, no one tries to go too small on the piping because the inch and a half copper is too expensive and you only want to do one inch to save cost. Okay, um, that's a problem. But if it's piped properly, if you have it installed properly, chiller, if you, again, piping and installed water flow is critical, um, no leaks. The system is very expensive to install, but it's very, very efficient to operate. So... Those are basically my thoughts on hydronics, but again, I did want to introduce the concept 
because I wanted to see that there's other ways to design the heating and cooling of a house. We didn't talk quite a lot about hydronic baseboard. We didn't talk quite a lot about the heating side because um, that's still upcoming and I want to just make sure that the air conditioning is the critical part. I could throw heat through just about any ductwork and the ductwork in the air handler on the heating side is less critical to size than the cooling. So that's just where, where we're at. Okay, that is my new material. Does anybody have any questions on anything that I covered today? You had mentioned that, uh, you know, you had made a statement the other day that, you know, chillers for home, you know, home use really wasn't, it wasn't used because they were, you know, the big commercial stuff. And then, of course, mentioning today, and I did see when I was looking at that link for Mitsubishi, I did see the uh, chiller, the residential chiller. Um, what is the, what is the, let's say, what is the, true benefit of a chiller for residential and do you see more people coming out with versions the average residential house is going to be too small for a chiller okay because if you're okay, just even, even the residential even even the reg residential one that Mitsubishi is doing it's a nice to have will you be able is there a really big benefit not really, because you, then you have to do the boiler thing. You, I mean, it, I don't see, I don't see a lot of people going there. There's another reason too. Think about your friend who installs chillers up in the Connecticut area. I think you have a friend who does work up there who does the chillers and stuff like that. Uh, I, I, no, he's a master electrician, and he was in charge of okay. maintenance for NBC. They had one on the building, and and now he's working for a. Uh, a mechanics company and they may they have houses okay. that they do a a tree how for. how many of the people out there in hvac real how many of the small residential companies in are probably familiar with chillers probably very few if that's any. part of the issue i don't see chillers becoming a big in residential you're limited on the people that can service it the average technician, think about the paths different technicians take, and I, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this to you guys or not before. There's different paths technicians take when they go into the field. Some people start in residential and move to commercial. Commercial is the first time they're going to really see chillers. Some people start in refrigeration, and that's what they do for the rest of their careers. It's an awesome part of the field. Some people start in commercial doing filter changes at Home Depot, which is awesome, and then move into the service side of commercial. All their deal, they're going to be dealing with chillers and rooftops. But there's very few people in residential who actually understand chillers. Again, they're temperamental. You have to have piping sizes proper. You have everything has to be proper. Um, would I love to see more chillers in residential? Yeah, I would, especially if they're like a heat pump type chiller where it does both hot and cold water. Um, I think it's an answer to an energy problem. But the question is, how many other people out there understand chillers? Um, it's just like geothermal. You would think by now geothermal systems would be the re would be all over the place. They've come down so far in price. They've become so efficient in terms of pricing. You would think geothermal would have taken off and be just about in every new construction. But again, the average contractor who wants to do in and out as low cost as possible to be the lowest bid, and I have a real bad opinion about low bid contracting, but to be the lowest bid they're going to bid the traditional air handler, flex ductwork, single thermostat, single return, gas furnace, okay, as a part of the air handler. That's what they're going to bid. They're not going to bid these high-end, really, really efficient situations. I'm not sure if that answers your question, Dave. I mean, that's that's a lot no, of... No, it's, it, it it does. I, I I am a firm believer after being in the 
communications industry for so long, there's a lot of stuff that gets developed well before you have the craft people to maintain it because they don't know about it yet. And the, ma the maintenance and the expertise comes after all of a sudden people see the benefit to the product. But I just figured if, if Mitsubishi is already looking at it and if it's that efficient, I would think there might ultimately be a push to go in that direction. You know where Mitsubishi sells the most of these? Dakin has an excellent product as well. Do you know where they sell the most of them? No. Europe. Energy codes are so tight in most of the European countries that a lot of this is looked at also. And in Mitsubishi, um, the Mitsubishi units and the Dakin units, I can use the little ductless splits. I don't even have to use an air handler. I can use the wall, oops, wrong, wrong symbol. I can use a, like a wall-mounted unit, like the little ductless split Mr. Slim idea. I can mount it on an outside wall. I can drain my condensate outside, and I can put these little ductless splits in connected to a chiller. I could put a ceiling-mounted one here. I could I can put wherever I want in here and here. Okay, and I could put these little ductless splits in. I could connect all of this to a chiller loop, which is just a single pipe that goes around. Okay, that's basically a perimeter loop. And I can get all of these these onto a chiller and the chiller just maintains the cold water temperature when any of these are calling for cooling, hot water temperature when it's calling for heating. And because these are air handler units, we have a fan in here that actually blows the air through. It's a really efficient shaded polar ECM motor. And I can do this all without duct work. Duct work is one of the biggest energy losses in any, in any building. Okay, duct work. If it's running through an attic or an unconditioned space, it's a big energy loss. So if I can run a chiller loop with just a pipe coming out of this chiller, okay, that's running basically to there, okay, to there, something over here, then to there, okay, I can run a perimeter loop and I can turn on and off these, these little units and I can have every space at its own temperature. So it's extreme comfort control. I can still have some form of, let's say, let's say we wanted to have um, this in the heating season, we change this chiller over to the heat mode. Okay, and we might bring in some boiler water into this loop, but I can have my warm floors if I wanted to because I don't run any duct work. I'm just running piping in all these directions with valves. So in Europe, this has become a really efficient space. So think about, for example, Dave, and your that master bedroom situation you were just telling me about. If you had a chiller with little air handlers, with the little ductless air handlers that do chilled water around in every one of the rooms, could I resolve my entire temperature control issue in each room? Yeah. Now the trade-off is, will I be able to filter the air as well as I did with a big air handler and massive filters in it? No. You have a trade-off. Well, the, the, other, the other problem is um, to be, this is just my personal opinion. I think these, I think these uh, uh, little ductless split units in all the rooms is ugly. Yeah, I do too. Now, here's the interesting part. You start looking around at the ductless splits. You start looking at some and doing some research on them. You can hide. They actually now make pictures that the ductless splits hide behind the picture frame. They have a T L V has a TV out that is actually the wall mounted unit of a ductless split. It's an LCD TV screen. So they're starting to get more and more you can tuck these behind things. You can tuck them in a ceiling. It looks like a ceiling register, and it's a ductless split unit. So again, uh, see, see that? Yeah, that opens up. Now, would these fit into a two by ten space if you if you had a second to, floor? 
You'd have to do a research on that. I can't 100% be sure without doing the research on it. Dakin is where I'd be looking. How do you, how do you spell that? It's D-A-I-K-E-N. And if you, re, if you send me an email later, I'll send you a link. Okay. Okay, so that's just, again, options that I want to bring out here when you're thinking design. There is not one single answer for this, okay? If I had to do my house over again and didn't have ductwork in here and didn't have a relatively new, new air handler system, I'd go ductless splits, okay? Because in my office, I sit here when I'm, when I'm like, working online with people like I'm doing now, my office door is closed because I don't want to disturb the rest of the house. And quite honestly, I don't want to hear the dogs barking, barking at the squirrels. And I have, um, I, it gets hot in here, even though I have a supply in return. But again, the thermostat is out in another portion of the house. So little duck, these little units on chilled water systems, I actually really, really like. Um, had I done it, had I, been able to do it all over again, this is the approach I would have done. But because I have ductwork, because I have a relatively new system, courtesy of the insurance claim a few years ago, um, couldn't do it. Didn't make financial sense. So, okay. So let me kill the recording here.